Oh no! So it's been about a year since that terrible accident and honestly watching this still is very painful to me. I mean, this was my favorite ball, by far my favorite ball and now it's in pieces. <sighs> yeah, the truth is I loved everything about that ball, like, like that low and wide curve, the intermediate size, you know, it's all those particularities that make the charm of such an artifact. Anyway, following that terrible situation, I did what I usually do, I just store them in this box. Well, it's not my old pasta machine. Another Japanese random uh, knife which handle the top of a guy one. A microplane grater which needs to weld the plate. Really is a mess, this one. And it stays in there basically until I decide uh, to fix it someday. Yeah, so I know it looks a bit like I don't fix anything because the box is so full, yet it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, let me show you an example. Okay, uh, I bought this little skillet a while ago and accidentally I dropped it on the floor. I'm not sure if you can see this, but there is a big crack right there uh, and it gets even wider when, when, when the pan gets hot. I fixed it by drilling the pan, you know, adding two screws and a metal plate and it creates like a big solid stitch, which is just perfect yet not super perfect to cook run. Another example, so I've got this temperature controlled electric kettle which is just amazing and yet what failed on me was the opening button which stopped working only a few months after I, I bought this. So for this one the, the, the fix was super simple, I added a loop, a tiny screw and now it just opens very easily. I mean it does the job so that's the point. Fixing things is just healing, not only for the object itself, but also for me, for, for, for my soul and for the relationship I have with things. They are not just uh, disposable. Like, anyway, I think you get my point. Let's just go back to the bowl that was broken. Uh, that Japanese bowl stayed in the box for a while until someday I decided it was time. To fix. Oh la 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 la. Decided to fix. Thank it. you so much, Alex, for, for, for taking care of us. Mere more. Of course, before doing that, I checked online if there was any specifics I should be aware of because it's ceramics. And then, what the? F I discovered kintsugi. Oh! The moment I discovered kintsugi, I was doomed. <laughs> The next station is Liverpool Street. Change for the Central and Circle Lines and National Rail Service. Right, so I am in London now. Uh, I am off to see a ceramist artist who also does Kintsugi and I obviously have a few questions for her. Thank you so much for this. It was a trouble. Very good, very yeah. good, very good. <laughs> so, so can you tell me, uh -huh. with your own words, mm. what, what is kintsugi then? Kintsugi is a, a Japanese way of mending broken pieces, not necessarily wow. ceramic. Okay. No. You can also fix other stuff. Yes, glasses as well. If, if you fix a bike, this part is very important because <laughs> it all starts in Japan a while ago. Mm -hmm. That, that's the legend at least, where like a shogun wanted to fix something. It was a, a gift from China. Very beautiful table. The table was very expensive and it was very important because tea ceremony was a way of socializing mm -hmm. back then. So it was broken at some point and then what? He sent it back to China to oh, get it fixed. It, they did fix it. They did fix but it. But how? Using wire. Wire? Like yes. metal wire? Mm. Oh wow, okay. Mm. Like so, stapler. So, <laughs> so I, I, I'm guessing he wasn't very happy with this. No, he, okay. he asked the Japanese craftsman ah, to... So, that, so that's it. the story. Mm -hmm. And that's how Kintsugi was born? Yes. Mm. That's a beautiful yeah. introduction. <laughs> yes, you did a good job. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So wow. first, yeah. I send the, send the profile. Oh, wow. Yes, oh, wow. just to make it easier to uh, put some... Uh, 
glue. Yes, I understand. Yes. It sticks better. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then okay. gives a bit of a tiny gap to, mm. for the glue to... I get this because get there in. will be a line, so you need a gap. Mm -hmm. And then I glue them using uh, this lacquer. And, and the glue can be natural or it can be synthetic. Yes. And then let it dry for a week. A week? Mm -hmm. It needs a week just to dry? Yes. Okay, mm. wow. And then I use uh, another lacquer. What? That, it's not over yet? No. You, 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 so for okay. this one is for uh, fixing. This one for coating. Coating, okay. okay. And then what? After each layer, mm -hmm. I need to dry for a week. Every time you put another layer, uh -huh. you wait for a week. One week, two uh -huh. weeks, uh -huh. then more? At least a week, yes. At, and at then, least? And then uh, we put um, gold powder. Put gold powder. You oh, have so gold powder. Mm -hmm. She has gold powder in this mm -hmm. workshop. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you keep this in a safe? No. No, no it's, it's very small amount. It's safe. very small very amount. Small yeah, amount. this one. How long? It. How long should you wait for it to dry completely? To dry completely, a month. A month. Mm -hmm. so, 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 how long does it take to fix a ball? Like a week, a week, a week, a week, a week. Like, like probably three months. Yes. To fix one, mm -hmm. to fix one ball. Mm -hmm. Three months. Yes. Mm. Oh, why? I seriously gotta think about this. <laughs> so I'm guessing it, mm -hmm. it doesn't come very cheap to do this. No. Mm. How much would it cost to, to fix one board like this? Like the, the, the normal price, not a special French guy cooking. <laughs> About 200 pounds? Yeah, 200 mm. pounds. Mm. So that's quite a lot, but that's because of the uh, the time, time I guess, yeah. and, and, and the work behind it. Mm -hmm. And so the gold, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> What would you say if I were telling you I stole all your gold? You stole my gold? Nah, you're too slow. The French, they are too slow. <laughs> you should go now, before I hit you. Well, you can't hit me if I hit you first. Snail. Shut Kintsugi. Ouch. Okay, I give up. Ah. Ne next time we'll do thumb war. Goodbye. <coughs> Thank you Mitsuyo so much for your help, for your precious tips and for that lovely chat. I now have a much clearer, much better understanding of the Kintsugi technique. That's on one hand, yet, 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 yet. I am still struggling with how to adapt this to our, you know, limited abilities and hectic schedules. In other words, how to make a cheat, a cheat of course, on Kintsugi, as simple as possible, as doable, as, as affordable, as safe-ish. That is basically what I'm gonna deal with in uh, part two of this Kintsugi story. As always, if you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up, like it, and share that everywhere on your social media. In case you missed it, you, you might be living on planet. My cookbook is coming on September 6th on Amazon. I'll post the link in the description box down below. And finally, if that is not already the case, you can subscribe to my channel not to miss the next episode. Take care, bye-bye. Salut.